Hello there and welcome to the Employment Law Show. John Scholes and Lior Samfiru. First time joining us. We'll stick around for the next uh, 30 minutes or so. Lots of information about your workplace, your severance, workplace rights, and everything under that rather wide uh, band. If you want to reach out anytime, by the way, 1-855-821-5900, employmentlawyer.ca, or simply help at employmentlawyer.ca is the email which we will refer to today a little later on in the show, and an amazing tool called the Pocket Employment Lawyer. We're going to give you more details on that in just a bit. This one's huge. Huge, Jerry. Very excited about yep. it. Very excited. Uh, wait till us. What do you got going on? It's, uh, it's been a great week. Uh, a great week for, for me as an employment lawyer because for me a great week is one where I get to speak to as many people as possible. Mm -hmm. If I get to speak to a lot of people, it's a good week because I solve problems. I make people feel better about their workplace situation. I inform and I educate. Love doing that. That's why I do what I do. So if you're ever in a workplace situation, a difficult one, a problem, your boss did something or said something, maybe you're worried about your job or you lost your job. Give me a call or send me an email. We'll give you that contact information throughout the show. And do it for me. Don't do it for you. Do it for me. Make me happy by allowing me to talk to you and solve your workplace problem. That's what we do on this show. So take advantage of listening to the show and contacting me after. But week there was, John, a situation that came across my desk. Now, we've, we've discussed workplace harassment before on this show, on our radio shows. It's a very common issue. But this one really, this situation really made me shake my head. Okay. I spoke with a, a lady who had worked for a car dealership for uh, a number of years and uh, quite, quite a long service employee. Uh, earlier this year, she had filed a harassment complaint against the coworker. It was sexual harassment, it was improper comments made, even some improper physical contact. She did the exact right thing. She went to HR, she filed a formal yep. harassment complaint, filled out a form, and told HR, please deal with it. So a couple weeks passed, and she gets called into a meeting uh, with HR and her boss, and she thinks, well, this meeting is to deal with my harassment. Maybe they're investigating. Maybe they want to tell me what they found. No. This meeting was to tell her, we're letting you go. Now, the company makes it very clear. We were looking through your files. We notice all types of irregularities. We don't think you're, you're doing a good job. So we're letting you go for cause. Wow, even. Even, even cause. That's what they said. And, and, of course, distraught, she calls me. John, here's what's happening here. She files a harassment complaint. Then, magically, for the first time ever, the company starts looking through her files and to, to look for that, maybe a needle in a haystack to try to find a reason to let her go. Clearly what's going on is they're looking for an excuse to let her go because they're upset that she filed the harassment complaint. That is illegal. Aside from the fact that the cause allegations is nonsense. Remember, it is extremely difficult to terminate an employee for cause. The employee would have had to do something nasty, something awful, for the employer to be able to do that. But the harassment really is the interesting thing here. She did the right thing. Once she files a harassment complaint, her employer is under an obligation to investigate and to try to fix the problem. They cannot punish her. They cannot terminate her. I call this the cocoon of protection. That's yeah. what she has. She has this cocoon around her that says you cannot be punished for filing a harassment complaint. This employer tried to find other reasons as an excuse not to have to deal with her harassment complaint. Well, it's a wrongful dismissal. It's a human rights violation. It's bad faith. You name it, this is what happened here. It's illegal. So I don't know if this company could have made things worse. It's that bad. So there's going to be significant repercussions here. And I wanted to remind everyone watching right now, if you're dealing with harassment, you have a right for a harassment-free work environment and your employer has the obligation to make that happen you should talk to your employer you should give them the opportunity to fix and most employers are not going to do what this company did they're not going to punish you if you cannot speak to your employer or you've tried and they're not doing anything or god forbid if you're punished for complaining about harassment gotta you gotta call me you gotta reach out to me call or email let's talk about that let me help you in this case, John, what this employer did, this car dealership, completely illegal. Now, th I mean, th this lady in this case, although they, they, they mess the entire thing up, she did have HR to go to. What if it's her direct boss and there's nobody hired to go to who's doing the harassing? And oftentimes I get that. Well, Lior, you say that I should speak to the company, but, but who do I speak to? Yeah, it's a right. small company. It's the boss that's harassing me. There's no one to speak to. I agree. If there's no one to speak to, it doesn't make sense to tell your boss, deal with the harassment that you're doing. It, it makes no sense. <laughs> no. At that point, we have to deal with it externally. At that point, it's time for me to get involved. Potentially, we have to look at a human rights uh, violation. We may consider a constructive dismissal, which means we can get the person out with compensation. So if you can't deal with it internally, 
let me deal with it externally, let me solve that problem and get you out of there if needed. But if possible, always a good idea to try to give the company the opportunity to fix that problem. Contact is easy, as you know, 1-855-821-5900. Employmentlawyer.ca is the website. You can go there and find information where you can catch our weekly radio show. We uh, do that show, and we take the, uh, the, not the good phone calls, but the interesting phone calls, and we play them back here, and we talk about them. First call for this show is coming up right now. I'm a approximately 20-year employee, and my employer decided that he wanted to put us all on contract. Now, I guess for the newer employees, it wasn't so much of an issue, but someone like myself who's been there about 20 years, my question was, would that affect me in terms of seniority should something happen in regards to severance? From what I understand in the contract is that we are being rehired by the company. So... John, the, the technical term for what's happening here, and this is complex, you may want to write it down, yeah, yeah, yeah. is nonsense. Okay. <laughs> okay, that's what's happening. Yeah. It's nonsense. And I'm actually not trying to be funny, but it, it is absolute nonsense. You don't get rehired by a company because... 20 years one, in. 20 years in because <laughs> one day they want you to sign an agreement. Yeah. It, it doesn't work that way. Now, let's, even if she had signed this document, she's still an employee. You don't get rehired simply because you sign a piece of paper. It doesn't work that way. Now... She should not sign an agreement like this. I can tell you without even seeing it that if her employer comes to her and wants her to sign an agreement, that agreement is going to provide some very negative and restrictive terms for her. It could potentially limit her entitlements down the road, cost her tens of, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars. Bad idea. So if, if you're working and now the employer says, we want you to sign a contract, we want to change your status, we want you desperately to sign this piece of paper, there's a reason for that. And none of those reasons are good for the employee. Your answer can and should be in all cases, no thanks. I want to continue on the same basis. I want to continue working with my same salary, compensation, and all other terms. If your employer insists, if your employer threatens you, that is wrong, that's illegal, it could be a wrongful dismissal. And bottom line is this, your status doesn't change because you signed a piece of paper. You don't get rehired, your seniority doesn't start at zero. Even if she had signed it, she would still have her full 20 years of service. You cannot lose your service because you signed a piece of paper, but let's not even risk it, let's not even go there. If you're asked to sign a piece of paper, let me see it. Let me tell you what it means. 99% of the time, it's going to be bad news, and you should not sign it. Well, it's, it's like you've always said, contrary to popular belief, you're better to, to move forth on a handshake rather than a 50-page document, right? Every time. Yeah. If you're hired, uh, if you're working for a company and, and you have not signed an employment agreement, it's a handshake agreement, it's an email agreement, love it. Much better, much more rights that you have. All an employment ag agreement, a written agreement does in most cases, is it takes away rights you would otherwise has, have and either eliminates them sure. or it gives them to the employer. Yeah. So bad idea, handshake rules every day. Before we start talking about it, go to it, pocketemploymentlawyer.ca. Give me some details, we're going to get right into it. So our regular viewers know about the severancepaycalculator.com website, still there, still hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people have used it, love it, it's been tremendous. But I wanted to allow people to get more information than just how much severance. I want to, res to help people assess their matters and get those matters resolved even if they don't pertain directly to severance. So I created another tool, pocketemploymentlawyer.ca. And the way I look at it, it's you already have an employment lawyer with you. If you have your smartphone, you have an employment lawyer. So go to pocketemploymentlawyer.ca and find out whether you've been constructively dismissed. Find out if you've been a victim of harassment or a human rights violation. Find out if you're an employee or an independent contractor. Okay? Find out if the employer has just cause to let you go. And, of course, calculate your severance as well. So it's easy. It's free. It's anonymous. You answer a few questions, and the analysis is provided to you there. Yes, you've been constructively dismissed. No, you have not. You're an employee. You're a contractor. You're going to get those answers. Check it out right now. If you had questions about your workplace rights, if you always wondered... You are not sure, should I call a lawyer, should I not? No need to wonder. Before you even call a lawyer, go to pocketemploymentlawyer.ca. That I mentioned it's free. Yeah. You have an employment lawyer. Check it out. It is, uh, it is free, and there's a contact on the top and bottom as well if you uh, want to carry forth and, and end up contacting you or a member of the team. Uh, after you get that information, I uh, want to get to a, uh, a scenario from pocketemploymentlawyer.ca. I don't know why you, uh, you want to comment. A brother says this, says, I was on long-term disability due to illness for nearly two years when I was cut off because I wasn't totally disabled. We love that term. Uh, my doctor has no idea why, but because I still can't work. 
When I updated my boss, she said I need to return in two weeks or she will fire me. I'm out. What so do I do? This scenario that you just read came from an email that someone sent our office, but there's nothing unique about it, and that's why we chose it. This happens all the time, and, and viewers of the uh, in, insurance injury law show would know about this because of the fact that insurance companies often cut you off when that two-year mark happens. They say at that point, well, we think you should be getting back to work after two years. Sometimes it can happen before, but here's the thing. If your doctor says you cannot work, it's improper for the insurance company to do that. And they're counting. The insurance yeah. company is counting on you saying, well, I guess if you say I have to be cut off, there's nothing I can do. But of course there is. So one of the things you could do if your insurance company is threatening to cut you off, whether it's two years or otherwise, is go to pocketemploymentlawyer.ca. There's a tool there in the pocketemploymentlawyer.ca website dealing specifically with being cut off disability. So let's take this information that you just read, let's plug it into the pocketemploymentlawyer.ca. You can see on screen how that works. So you fill in the information, there's an illness, there's an insurance policy, uh, they were uh, being cut off after two years, and the result is provided in the bottom there that, hey, if you, the doctor supports your disability and says you cannot work, that it's improper to be cut off and you're owed compensation. So that analysis you could go through just as I went through right now on pocketemploymentlawyer.ca. You would find out, wait a second, it was not proper for the insurance to cut me off. I should still be on long-term disability. If that's your situation, you know what to do. You can reach out to us. There's a button right on the Pocket Employment Lawyer so that we can help you get what you're owed. It's as simple as that, John. Week in, week out, both on this uh, emails, on this show and radio as well, there's always a question, can my employer do this? Can they do that? Want to answer some of those questions after a short break, so stick around for that to reach out. 1-855-821-5900 and employmentlawyer.ca. It's the Employment Law Show. Stick around. Lots more is coming up. You lost your job. They only gave you two weeks of severance per year worked. But where can you find out what you're really owed? I'm going to severancepaycalculator.com. Find out how much you're owed right now. Severancepaycalculator.com. You've been denied long-term disability. You think you're powerless, but you have a lot more power than you think. I'll tell you a secret. It's a numbers game for the insurance company. They're betting on you walking away from money that they owe you. Don't make that mistake. We resolve disability claims all the time. We force insurers to pay what they owe. We're in your corner. Call Savan and his team, 1-855-821-5900, or go to disabilityrights.ca. You lost your job. They said they had a good reason, but you think you've been wrongfully dismissed. Now what are you going to do? I'm going to employmentlawyer.ca. Always check with the employment lawyer first at employmentlawyer.ca. And welcome back to the Employment Law Show. John Scholes, your host, Lior Sanfiru. Each week we answer your questions, give out tons of information for you to navigate your workplace and your life a little more a little more easily, if, if that's the case. I um, want to talk about this and the questions we get on the phone calls and emails all the time. I know you get them to the firm. My employer's done this or my employer's done that. Can they do this? Are they allowed to do that stuff, right? Usually that's, a, that's how a call with me starts often. Right. Hey, Lior, I have a question. Can my employer do this? And so we wanted to take some of those most common questions that I get that start with, can my employer do something, mm -hmm. and answer them right here on the show. So if you've always wondered, can your employer do something to you, we'll try to cover that right now. First one up is this, can they let me go for no good reason? A very common question. Yep. I was let go, no good reason, can they do that? And, you know, the, the answer that I, I give here upsets people often, but the answer is yes, they can. Your employer is allowed to let you go for no good reason or for bad reason, so long as they pay you the severance that you're owed. It's not a wrongful dismissal to be let go when the company shouldn't be letting you go. It's a wrongful dismissal if you're not paid proper severance. Now, ethically, John, and for business reasons and for moral reasons, I agree. An employer should not let you go if there's no good reason. But from a legal standpoint, they can do that as long as severance is paid. So they don't have to have a good reason. You may, not, you may have done nothing wrong. Right. You may have been more senior and a better employee than someone else. They can still let you go as long as severance is paid. The exception to that, of course, John, is you cannot be let go because of a discriminatory reason. You cannot be let go because you're pregnant, because of your age or your disability or your ethnicity. That's a human rights violation. That's illegal. But short of that, pretty much for any reason, you can be let go, 
But you have to be paid severance, keeping in mind, of course, that the vast majority of people, over 90%, when they are let go, are offered a lot less severance than what they're actually owed. Can my employer make me work overtime hours? Very good question. And the answer to that is really it depends. If you haven't reg worked regular overtime hours, it hasn't been something that you did, your employer can't require that. They can't change the terms no of employment. History. There's no history. If your employer says, well, from now on, we want you to work overtime, you're able to say no, and you can't really be punished. That's not misconduct. On the other hand, if this is something you've, you've done, whether you wanted to or you just did it because you felt you had to, so there's that history now. You've been working overtime hours, it's, it's a term of your employment, then yes, your employer can expect for that to continue. And of course, they have to pay you overtime if you work more than 44 hours a week. So keep in mind, if you don't want to work overtime, you don't want to set that precedent. And if you do, if you're going to work overtime, make sure you tell your employer, in writing, always in writing, Employer, just so you know, I have worked overtime, I agree to work overtime, but this does not mean that I agree to overtime always. Right. Make sure that they know that by working overtime this one or two times, you're not agreeing to work at any time they want. If you do that, then you, you, you're, you're still protected. Just before we move on to the next one, as far as overtime is concerned, someone listening or watching going, you know what, wait, I'm a salaried employee, how does that work? Salaried employees get overtime as well. If you work more than 44 hours a week, you get okay. time and a half. We simply look at your weekly salary, divide that by 44. Cool. That gives us an hourly rate. Time and a half is your overtime rate. If you're on salary, you still get overtime. We're talking about can my employer make me do this? Can they make me do that? Can they make me come back to work contrary to what my doctor says? Unlike the previous one, there's no uh, dispute here. The answer is an absolute no. Your doctor is judge and jury when it comes to your ability to work. If your doctor says you cannot work, that's it. Your employer cannot make you work. They cannot threaten you. They cannot consider you to have resigned. They can't say, well, we don't believe your doctor. See another doctor. None of that. They also can't ask additional questions. Mm -hmm. They can't say, well, I want to know what your medical condition is. No. If you've provided a doctor's note that says, I cannot work, or says that, I'll, I'll be off work for the next three weeks. That's it. Your employer cannot make you come back to work. Contrary, cannot uh, dispute what the doctor says. If they do, that could be a human rights violation. It could be a constructive dismissal. It's illegal. You have to reach out to me. Your doctor, whatever the doctor says, that's what matters. Next one, can my employer give me a different job? The, the answer is, well, it, it does depend. If you're working on machine A, and now they want you to work on machine B, as long as there's not a big difference, they probably could do that. What the employer cannot do is give you a vastly different job, especially if it's a, a lesser position okay. in terms of compensation, in terms of responsibilities or stat, status or stature. If your employer essentially is giving you a demotion, then no, they can't do that. If it's essentially a similar job within what you were doing before, they can. If you're not sure, pocketemploymentlawyer.ca can help you with that, or you can reach out to me. Happy to talk. We're talking about can my employer do this? Can they do that to my, to my workplace, to my job? The next one is this. Can they simply close down shop and avoid paying me severance? The old run and hide. Absolutely not. Yeah. Absolutely not. Now, if a company is officially bankrupt, then guess what? Unfortunately, you're not going to get severance. We've seen examples of that in the past. Sears, Sears being yeah. one of them. It went bankrupt. Employees did not get their full entitlements. But if the company simply says, we're going to shut down, uh, we don't want to operate, and, and maybe we'll open across the street under a different name. No, none of that works. You still have to get paid your full severance. There's ways to enforce that against the company, even potentially against the company's owner if they're trying to play these games. So if you're let go, if the company says, too bad, we're shutting down, we're not paying you, you want to reach out to me. But remember, time is not your friend at that, in that situation. You want to act quickly before the, any, any money that the company has disappears, before the owner packs up and goes to some foreign country. You have to act quickly. Last one is, can my uh, employer stop me from working for a competitor? And that's a great question, and, and it, 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 the answer is yes and no. Yeah, no so yeah. here's why I mean by that. And for most people, agreeing to a non-competition obligation is not going to be enforceable. Our courts don't enforce those except for very senior fiduciary employees. So the short answer is no, they can't force you. But that's not the real answer. The real answer is not what the employer can legally do. The answer is, well, what is the employer going to try to do? Are they going to try to enforce that obligation, even though they may not be able to? Are they going to take legal action against you because you work for a competitor? 
In doing that, are they going to make your life miserable? Is it going to cost you a lot of money? So the best advice I give to people that sign non-competition obligations is you have to take those seriously. Yeah. You can't ignore them. It's a risk if you ignore them and you work for a competitor. You may want to talk to your employer and say, employer, I am going to go work for a competitor, but I'm not going to raid your business. I'm not going to steal your clients. So please work with me and, and, and don't take legal action against me probably the smartest thing to do and if you are offered a new employment agreement and it has a non-competition term in it you have to be very mindful you can't just ignore it if you sign it you have to be prepared to live with it other questions along this line no problem 1-855-821-5900 it is employmentlawyer.ca or simply help at employmentlawyer.ca for email that's also the website where you can research our radio shows call number two for today is coming up right now I was uh, let go on Thursday without reason. They just said, we're going to have to let you go. They did give me a release form to sign it. They're offering me the standard acts, which is, I think, the two weeks. I was doing customer service for three years. I am 47 years old. Yeah. Uh, it seems a little lean. <laughs> a little lean is, is uh, <laughs> putting it very mildly. Yeah. Uh, and, but it's a very, this, this call that we got on our show is a very common question that I get. I get these types of calls or emails every day, usually multiple times a day, even more times on the weekend. So let's be very clear here. Uh, this is a common situation where she's let go. Remember what I said before, she, is, she can be let go. Her employer is allowed to let her go, even though she has done nothing wrong. I'm sure she's a, a very good employee and a good person. It's a question of severance. So rather than me tell you how deficient it is, let's take her information. Let's plug that into pocketemploymentlawyer.ca. There's a section there dealing specifically with calculating your severance. Yep. So she's let go. She goes to pocketemploymentlawyer.ca. And, and what do we see there? We can see that on the screen. So she, she's in a labor type of a job, three years of employment, 47 years old, and she was offered two weeks pay, which she believed, oh, it's just standard. No, no, severance pay calculator, on the pocketemploymentlawyer.ca website correctly assesses her as being owed three months pay. Not three weeks, so not an extra week's pay. She's owed three months pay. For her, that's a difference of $8,000. Uh, it's a, lot of, it's a, a lot, lot, of lot of money. Now, remember, her employer asked her to sign a release. If she has signed that release and took that two weeks pay, she'd be done. She would not be able to pursue these $8,000. That's why it's so important to go to pocketemploymentlawyer.ca to call me, to call another employment lawyer if you don't like me. That's okay. But you have to do something. You don't want to realize after you signed, oh, wait a second, they owed me another eight, ten, fifteen, eighty thousand dollars $80,000. It's a very bad situation when that happens. So be smart. Go to pocketemploymentlawyer.ca. Temporary layoffs for hourly workers and employees. We'll navigate that after a short break. Uh, the number 1-855-821-5900 and employmentlawyer.ca. It's the Employment Law Show. Lots more of it is coming up. Stick around. You were being harassed, and when you said something about it, you're the one who lost your job. Now what are you going to do? I'm going to employmentlawyer.ca. Always check with the Employment Lawyer first at employmentlawyer.ca. Insurance companies deny long-term disability claims all the time. They give lots of excuses. Don't give up. I've seen it all. They've ignored your doctors, they've ignored you. You're angry and you're frustrated. But there's hope. We resolve disability claims all the time. We force insurers to pay what they owe. We're in your corner. Call Savan and his team, 1-855-821-5900 or go to disabilityrights.ca. You thought you had a secure job. You didn't see it coming. Now what do you do? I'm going to employmentlawyer.ca. Always check with The Employment Lawyer first at employmentlawyer.ca. And welcome back to the Employment Law Show. We do a lot of things on the show. We answer emails. We take phone calls from the uh, radio show. We get employmentlawyer.ca to find where you can catch a radio show and have your questions answered and asked both on the air. Then we take them here and uh, we talk about them. Basically, call number three for today is coming right now, brother. I've been sure. employed for a company for 18 years. Today, they tell me due to restructuring, they no longer need me. Director of operations, grew the business, of restructuring 18 years, and they offered me 18 weeks. 18 weeks? Wow. Weeks. How old are you? 48. Mm. Again. Yeah, so, so, so that's me alive on the air uh, yeah. when we recorded this, expressing my 
this man's surprise at 18 weeks. But here's the thing. I was surprised because I know better. But if you ask most people, this guy's been there for 18 years. They said, here's 18 weeks pay. When sure, week for a year. It's, yeah, it sounds great. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's all kosher, as they say. Yeah. Well, not so fast. Now, remember, the issue here is not that they let him go. He's been there for 18 years. It's a long time. He is probably a good employee, or he wouldn't have made it to 18 years. Yeah. But that's not the issue. The issue is this. Is 18 weeks sufficient after uh, 18 years of, uh, of uh, work? No, not even close. So I can tell you he's owed much more than that. But let's see, again, the pocketemploymentlawyer.ca in action so that you can see how that works literally take seconds so mm -hmm. pocketemploymentlawyer.ca will plug in his information you see that on the screen he's a director of operation there for 18 years uh 48 years old and of course offered 18 weeks pay uh-uh severance calculator as part of the pocketemploymentlawyer.ca correctly assesses him as being owed between 18 to 24 months, months. pay. Yeah. 18 to 24 months. I said months, not weeks. Depending on his salary, that could be easily a six-figure difference, if not more. Now, I can also tell you, a bit of a, a spoiler alert, that, that I actually did speak with this guy after, and I helped him resolve the matter and got him what he's actually owed. It's that simple, but it starts with pocketemploymentlawyer.ca to find out how much you're owed. And for this person, that difference is massive. Another uh, resource for you to ask your questions, terminationquestions.com. If you haven't gone to that website, check it out. Lay your question down there. And Savannah, or pardon me, Lior, Savannah does one too. But uh, Lior and his team will answer the questions rather quickly. I'm going to throw one at you, pal. It says this, uh, I've been an hourly worker for almost two years. Yesterday, my manager said they're laying me off temporarily due to slow business. When I protested, he said I had no choice but to accept it because I was an hourly worker. And he was within his rights. Is he correct? He is not correct, and, and this is a question that we, we got that was posted on terminationquestions.com. Check that, check that tool out yourself. You can post questions. Myself, one of my colleagues will answer that usually within minutes. But on terminationquestions.com, that question came. And, and here's the thing, when it comes to temporary layoff, an employer in most cases does not have the right to lay you off temporarily. It doesn't matter if you're on hourly, salary, full-time, or part-time. It does not matter. A temporary layoff in most situations is a termination which means if the employer does it, you, the employee, can say no, and if it happens anyway, you can treat that as a termination and leave with your full severance. Now, here's the thing. If uh, your employer does this and, he, be, and you allow them to do it, if you say, well, I didn't know, so I accepted it and I went back to work, the unfortunate thing about that is you may have given them the right to do it again. And that's the problem. You may not have realized that a temporary layoff is illegal, so you let it happen. The second time they do it, the third and the fourth, may not be illegal at that point. So you probably only have one kick at that particular can in terms of standing up for your rights. If your employer lays you off temporarily, you can say no. Uh, I, I will not accept that. You can treat that as a termination, get your severance, and go work somewhere where they don't do that. So there's a history that that can kind of sink the boat for you, or if it's written in your employment contract too as well. Yes, right? and some employers think about that in advance. It's not common, but it does happen where the employer has it right in the employment agreement saying, employee, we may decide to lay you off temporarily, so you agree to that by signing this agreement. If you sign an agreement like that, again, not common, but it does happen, then the employer does have a right to lay you off for up to 13 or 34 weeks, depending on whether benefits are continued, and it's not a termination. But for most people, a temporary layoff is a termination. If you're not sure, if you don't know if what it applies to you, call me, let's talk about that. But in most cases, you don't want to accept that temporary layoff. Can you imagine, John? You accept, you come back to work, you're laid off again a few weeks later. And again. And then again yeah. and again. You can't work like that. You can live like that. You can't pay your bills that way. A very bad situation to be in. So remember the rule. For most people, a temporary layoff is illegal. Again, great question via terminationquestions.com. As we leave, I want to give you the final way to reach out. one 855 821 5900. You got employmentlawyer.ca. Help at employmentlawyer.ca is the email address. That website also you can find where to find and catch and listen to the radio show from which we pull our phone calls. And it is new, it's huge, it's going to gain some serious momentum. So check it out. We're talking about pocketemploymentlawyer.ca. All the stuff you need to know about your work and life is right there. A little bit on disability law as well. Pocketemploymentlawyer.ca. Till next time, Employment Law Show. Stick around. We'll catch you next time. Closed captioning of this program is brought to you in part by severancepaycalculator.com. Find out how much you are owed right now. severancepaycalculator.com.